Well, good afternoon. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for taking the time to join us for this uh, technical webinar presentation on Universal Reporter Suite and the Report Adapter for Smart Plant Instrumentation. My name is Andy Osborne. I'm Director of Global Business Development, and I'll be joined by Christine Reck, our senior consultant, who will take you through the presentation itself. Just in terms of the agenda, we're just going through this brief introduction now. Um, I'm then going to hand over to Christine, who will spend maybe about 30 minutes uh, going through the report adapter and all of its capabilities. We'll then come back to myself with a summary, go through some quick poll questions, and then answer any audience questions that have been posed. So as we go through this, please feel free to ask any questions using the question capability within the webinar itself. We're not going to answer those until the very end, and then we'll get through as many as we can within the allotted time. So without any further ado, I'm going to hand over to Christine for her to take you through the uh, report adapter for Smart Plant Instrumentation. So hello, everybody, also from my side. I hope you'll see my screen. And I'm going to start with um, a very short presentation. And um, what are we talking about today? It's about Universal Reporter looking at data coming from Smart Plan Instrumentation. Um, what, what data can we access at this point? We can access and expect instrument and loop data. We can expect the documents that were created in SPI, the document names, and also their association to, to instrument. We can also look at uh, cable data, panel data, terminal strips, and uh, of course also hookups. And another issue that we think is quite important is the possibility to compare data coming from PID with data coming from SPI. In our opinion, the target group for these applications is everybody in the company who needs to access uh, instruments, loops, uh, documents, and also who is interested from, from the instrumentation point of view to maybe see where is an instrument placed in the PID, how can we get closer to the PID data that is related to this instrument. So this was all in terms of uh, slides. So I will just uh, start with the presentation. And as you probably already know, we always have uh, an application adapter, which is extracting information, and then Universal Reporter, which is the tool that will show this information. So for instance, the instrument report adapter is able to look into a SPI plant and can extract data from there. This extraction um, would also allow you to choose which data from which area you want to extract. So you have the possibility to select the areas, to select the units, and the result of the selection will in the end be loaded to an MDB file. And we will open this MDB file with Universal Reporter to see the data and generate uh, Excel reports or search for data in, in Universal Reporter. Uh, here in Tools, we have the possibility to configure attributes. And this means um, from the long list of attributes which are available in different tables in Smart Plan Instrumentation, we allow the administrator or let's say the power user to choose from this list which attributes he wants to export. So here you can see the numbers from the whole possibility of attributes. I have chosen at this point 54. I could select many more and extract them and see them later in Universal. So this is just an example for a pre-selection that can be done. In here, you see, I would say, almost all the attributes, including the UDF fields from SPI. 
and we have put them together in like logical groups. So one of these logical groups is the instrument loop section, which also includes uh, equipment information, line information. So with these two, you are able to make the combination between uh, in which line is an instrument uh, lying or to which equipment that is referred to. We also have the possibility to select uh, process data attributes and attributes that are related to spec sheets. Um, okay, so this is about the selection of the attributes. It is done in, in this interface and everything that you see on the right side will be extracted at the next extraction time. Another option that is available here, and it will get interesting uh, in, the, in the last part of the presentation, it, it is possible to add additional SQL statements at extraction time. I even have configured some here. So for instance, um, after the normal data is extracted, we are adding a column to the document table and, and we are filling this column with different values. This is just an example about uh, additional fields that can be generated when extracting from SPI. Uh, why is it important if you consider that the naming convention in SPI always has these blanks um, available which are enforced and in the ID normally the validation is not generating the blanks, it's just a, 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 let's say a letter and, and some number fields, you could use SQL statements to, to generate um, additional fields which you can later use for combining the two applications DID and SPI. Another issue I want to emphasize is that uh, you can save the settings that you are using at extraction to an INI file and you can load these settings in another environment on another machine or for another project. So once you have configured the data you want to extract, you can port it to another place and use it from there so you don't have to do it again. Okay, now let's have a look at the data that is extracted. I have opened this MDB file in Universal Reporter and for those of you who don't yet know the difference between Universal Reporter or Application Reporter, in Universal Reporter, we are able to open more than one project, so we can have two or three or four at a time, and I will show this later. In Application Reporter, we can only open one. So in Application Reporter, we cannot make a comparison between PID and SPI, or between two different uh, snapshots of PID, or two different snapshots of data coming from SPI. This is the main difference of the two tools. Within Universal Reporter, I will show you the result of the extraction. We have these nodes here in the tree view. The most important one, of course, instrumentation and group. In here, you have the possibility to select or deselect attributes. So, for instance, if I check the component service and I go to the last column, you see that it was added here. If I deselect uh, for instance, component type description, it will be removed from here. You can also take columns and drag them to a new place. So these are just some main features in Universal Reporter. You can sort by clicking on a column. You can filter with this white line, which is kind of a auto filter. Yeah. And you can also use uh, a very nice method called uh, filter by list, which means, for instance, if I want to see uh, control files, but also general, I can use the filter by list method. And in here, I just select uh, control files and general and hit OK. And then I got exactly this, this data uh, visible in the view. So this is a very nice possibility to select uh, and filter columns 
I can also show it for manufacturer if I'm interested in road mount and ABD. I would select it from here. I choose them. I say OK. And then I get only the data that is related to these two manufacturers. There is another possibility of viewing data, which is also quite interesting. If we do not look at the flat table, which is represented over here, but we look here in the tree view, you see the plus sign. And below the plus sign, you have all the attributes available that are visible here. And you could, for instance, check what are the different manufacturers. If you select one, this window will always reflect the value that you selected here. So you can just click them one by one and will always get as a result the data that applies to, to this manufacturer, for instance. And this is valid for all the different attributes that you see here. And of course, also for all the different three nodes that you have on the left side. And of course, for all applications that we are extracting from, and not only for, for SPI data. OK, uh, before I uh, leave this general topic and go to the instrument index, I want to show you that we don't see only data coming from the instrumentation table. We also have here in the back side uh, data that is coming from process data. So for instance, the minimum pressure and so on. And we can also use these for sorting or filtering or whatever you want to do with it. So it's a combination from uh, a lot of different tables from SPI. The next topic would be how can we generate an instrument index? I have defined a special view called instrument index. I can activate this view. This view only displays instrument loop data and document data. So uh, you see there is also a pre-selection on the topics that, that you want to see at this point. And from this view, I'm able to generate an Excel report. And I can generate this report with or without a template. If I do it without, I will just get an Excel file that shows all the columns and rows that were visible in Universal Reporter and just takes them to Excel in a straight format. Uh, of course, for a real documentation, it's much better to have formatted reports. And therefore, we can configure templates, for instance, this instrument index template. And if we use it uh, during the extraction and generate the same report again, it will, of course, look a little bit different. And you can see here that we have a logo, we have a title, we have a formatted column, and we have two special fields on the left side. This is the actual date, which uh, is, well, expected all the time uh, with the report. And this is the plant name that we have placed in the report. This means that. Um, in the Excel template, I will edit this one so that you can see how it looks like. Of course, we have some normal things like logos, columns, attributes, etc. But we do have the possibility to place uh, variables. Uh, these are standard variables that come with the software. But you can also define your own variables and place them in the header lines of the template. And I think this is a very nice way to, to put more data into the report. OK, so much to the instrument index. The next topic is about documents. I am using uh, another view now to show you the document feature. These are the document names that are available in SPI in the extracted information. And you see also in this window, I have the possibility to select uh, a filter so that I see, for instance, calculation sheet or process data sheet or spec sheet. I can clear the filter away. 
And this list is really only a document list. If I want to see also the components which are related to these documents, there is a easy method, method to generate this by dragging the instruments on top of the documents. You can also do it the other way around. It doesn't matter which way. We have the possibility to choose a link. So if I want to see specification related items, I use this link. I use the select matching rows. And in the end, I get a multi-window. And this multi-window would display on the left side instrument information, on the right side the document information. And eventually I could also use uh, a special view uh, to, to generate um, and look at a different um, to look at this data in, in a different way. Another possibility Let's say the same thing, but for um, process data sheets, you can make the same drag function. You can activate the process data, and then you get the Buji view, which would show the relation between instruments and the process data documents that are available in SPI. OK. The next topic on the list is how to handle the hookup. In SDI, there usually are a lot of hookups, a lot of dif different hookup types. So if we clear away the filter from here, we really get quite a long list of different hookups. And these hookups have, of course, their uh, own uh, items. And also in here, we can um, activate this auto filter, and then we can see the different items belonging to different hookups. And also from here, we can eventually extract Excel sheets. So one of them would be, for instance, without template. In this case, if I do it without a template, I get the attribute that you have seen in the window in a, just a straight table view. So they will just display here in the Excel without formatting. But it is also possible to um, activate templates. So for instance, if I choose this hookup item list Excel template and I create a report afterwards, I will have a really nice formatted uh, hookup report, which will display the name on top and will display the hookup items below with their size, material, description, manufacturer, in case there is one defined, etc. Uh, one feature that I also want to show you, remember that it is possible to select uh, more than one uh, uh, hookup from here. So if I choose this uh, filter by list again, and for instance, I select um, let's see this one, but also these two, and I say OK. I will get them in the list. And if I generate the Excel report from here, I will again get one Excel file. But in this Excel file, I have three sheets. And each of the sheets will display one of the hookups that I have selected. So you can generate, uh, let's say, a lot of data in one Excel sheet if you choose more than one hookup and want to generate the item list from there. And I think this is a very nice feature uh, to, to handle these hookups. Uh, as I said, the item list is just an example it would also be possible to generate um, a hookup tag list or a hookup bill of material if we combine the components and the hookups. And we can also specify Excel templates for, for these kind of reports. OK, the next topic is uh, how can we handle uh, 
for instance, cables, panels, etc. For this, I switch over again to the demo view. And in here, I will go here on top. You see, we do have the list of cables extracted. And we also have the panels and racks at this point, which you can see here. And I have configured uh, a cable list, which I extracted by using um, a multi-window. So the result will look like this. So you see it's a cable schedule, which would show uh, the list of the different cables, with their from panel name, and with their two panel name, in case both sides of a cable are connected. So this is also possible to, to get expected from uh, Universal Reporter using the multi-window and combining the different uh, parts where the data is coming from. Another topic I want to talk about is the comparison with data coming from the ID. So you are probably aware that uh, the naming convention in SPI will always generate these blanks in the tag number. And this is valid for the instruments, but it is also valid for the loops. Um, what I will do now, I will open an extraction from SmartBand DID. So it's another MDB file that was extracted from the same project, but from SmartBand DID. So we have now two windows, a PIT window and the instrumentation window that we had open uh, all the time. And you see that on the PID side, the instruments are called PI-9CV-2004, uh, so all the names are without blanks. And this also applies to the loops. So um, what, what can we do now? Because the comparison between these will, of course, not work 100% because of this different formatting. There are two possibilities to overcome this problem. I will show you one of them. If I drag the PID instrument table on top of the instrument loop table from SDI, I get a multi-window. I can use a link to generate it which is called the ID instrumentation trim. And if we look at this link, you can see that in the ID, we are using the whole attribute item tag. In instrumentation, we are using a combination of trimmed attributes in order to have this mapping work correct between the ID and SDI. So using this link, we get again a multi-window. And this window shows all the instruments which are available on both sides. I can open a link that, uh, excuse me, a view that I have prepared for it. And now we can also generate a report uh, by using a template. And this report will show the combination of instruments from both applications, regardless of the blanks that are available on the left side but are not available on the right side. Of course, we could make a combination for the loop data. So I have chosen the, the instrument tag to generate the link, but it would also work for loop or for some other fields that you might be interested in combining between the two applications. Last but not least, if we go back to the PID data, and let's say you're an instrument engineer, and you want to see where is a special instrument in the PID, all you have to do is click on the instrument you're interested in. It can also be more than one. And then you click on right mouse highlight object. And in this case, Smart Sketch will open and we'll show the instrument in a highlight color. So let's do this again for another value. 
If I want to know where is PI minus 9, I can just select this, click on highlight, the PID will open and the instrument will display. If I would click on two instruments, let's say these two, uh, I can do it like this, right mouse highlight, I get both highlighted and this would also work if they are located in different PIDs, then you would get both PIDs open so you can see the data that you are looking for and I think that is also a very nice feature uh, available in Universal Reporter uh, regarding the data from PID. Yes, um, I'm pretty much finished with my presentation so I will hand back to Andy and I'm waiting for the questions. Okay, thank you Christine. Um, so yes, let's uh, come back here and um, move on to the summary. So really what we've gone through is showing you how you can easily generate reports for the instrumentation. Now the thing with the report adapter, it's consistent with all other report adapters that we provide for the Universal Reporter Suite. So that's covering all of the smart plant products. Um, in terms of data extraction, we are working uh, offline with an MDB that we're extracting and we can automate that. We can schedule that so that it's updated on either a daily basis or a weekly basis depending on how you want to operate your project. Um, as you've seen, we can create Excel templates and views. This is very fast and very easy. And we can compare the data from the instrument database against other systems. And Christine gave an example of uh, the comparison against P&ID data. I mean, overall, though, it gives you a very easy interface to understand the data and the contents uh, within it. So that was the summary. Uh